Our thoughts influence our actions, and our actions shape our surroundings. And considering that our surroundings have a strong influence on our thought habits in the first place, this appears to be a cycle. However, some people take this abstract power of thought concept a bit too far. Several documentary films and books have been making outrageous claims concerning the effect that thoughts can have on matter and DNA. Today I'm going to be using some basic biology to debunk a specific assertion from the 2008 film, Esoteric Agenda, by Benjamin Stewart. There are 64 possible codes of amino acids in our DNA structure made from four elements, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, and nitrogen. By any means of logic, we should have all 64 codes activated within our DNA structure. Yet we presently only have 20 active codes. And of these 64 possibilities, it appears that only 20 of these codes are turned on right now for us, the 20 amino acids. There is a switch that turns off and turns on where those coding sites lie, and that the switch uh, for that turning off and turning on is what we call emotion. And this is the first time that we've ever seen the patterns of emotion directly physically linked to human genetic material. Well, fear is a long, slow wave of emotion. So this wave of fear is a long, slow wave and touches relatively few sites on this DNA. So an individual living in fear is limited to the number of antenna that they have available to them. Whereas an individual uh, living in the pattern of love, this is love in DNA. You can see it's, it's a higher frequency, shorter uh, wavelength. We have many more potential sites for coding uh, along that genetic pattern. Now there's a simple reason why there's only 20 amino acids resulting from 64 possible combinations, but that only becomes clear once we know a bit more about DNA transcription and translation. But first off, amino acids are not coded for by combinations of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. Rather, they're coded for by combinations of nucleic acids. I think Stewart's just confusing the four nitrogenous bases of DNA with the four most common elements in living organisms. DNA is really comprised of a 5-carbon sugar called deoxyribose, connected to a phosphate group and four nitrogenous bases. The phosphate will bond to the third and fifth carbon on the deoxyribose in a way that makes the strand directional. The double helical structure of the DNA molecule is formed by two of these sugar phosphate chains running in opposite directions. The four nitrogenous bases complement each other, so adenine will always bond with thiamine, and guanine will always bond with cytosine. In the case of RNA, thiamine is replaced with uracil. This allows for each half of the DNA molecule to be used as a template for replication. Now that we have a strand of DNA, it's time to transcribe an RNA molecule and translate some protein. This is where we can see how crazy Ben Stewart and his guest Greg Braden really sound when they claim that emotions are regulating protein synthesis. Transcription involves building an RNA template from the newly synthesized DNA molecule. During this process, the enzyme RNA polymerase travels down the DNA molecule, briefly separating the double helix in order to use the free nucleotides to build the RNA template. This template is called messenger RNA, and now we need to translate this mRNA molecule into a protein. So we take the long strand of mRNA over to the endoplasmic reticulum and feed it through a ribosome. The ribosome is comprised of protein and another kind of RNA called ribosomal RNA, which has three binding sites for another molecule called transfer RNA. The mRNA progresses through the binding sites three nitrogenous bases at a time. Each group of three nitrogenous bases is called a codon, and each codon corresponds to a specific anticodon which is attached to one end of the tRNA molecule. The other end of the tRNA molecule is connected to an amino acid, and as the mRNA continues through the A, P, and E sites, additional tRNA molecules contribute their amino acid, which connects to form a long polypeptide chain. Now, different codons have different functions. The mRNA sequence almost always begins with the codon AUG, which codes for methionine. The sequence always ends with a stop codon, either UAA, UAG, or UGA. The amino acid leucine, on the other hand, can be coded for by six different codons. And having several different possible codes is evolutionarily advantageous, because it allows for some errors to occur without changing the actual protein formation. 
An error in the genetic code is called a mutation, and they can either be spontaneous or induced. When a minor mistake is made in the gene sequence, but the same amino acid is still coded for, it's called a silent mutation. When a minor mistake actually does code for a different amino acid, it's called a missense mutation. If a premature stop codon ends the mRNA sequence too early, it's called a nonsense mutation. And finally, an insertion or deletion of a codon will result in a frame shift mutation. The acute effects of mutation are often lethal. However, the gradual process of evolution actually requires mutation for natural selection to act upon. Considering the effects of various mutation types, we can see very clearly how overlapping codes can be beneficial. Having several possible codes for each amino acid allows for just the right balance of mutation for an individual organism to remain strong while the population remains adaptable. So leucine is defined as UUA, that's a leucine, and, and that's fine. But look at this, UUG is a completely different chemical combination and it's still leucine. And CUU is still leucine, CUC, CUA, CUG. Why is it that all of these don't result in separate individual and different patterns? Why do they all code for exactly the same amino acid of leucine? Why are they so generalized? That's the mystery in the life sciences today. So the real reason that our DNA is only coding for 20 amino acids, despite 64 possible combinations, is because each amino acid can be coded for by several different codons. It has nothing to do with love, or emotional vibrations, or cymatics. It has nothing to do with quantum mechanics, or the Illuminati, or the Mayan prophecy of 2012. Rather, filmmaker Benjamin Stewart and the mystics that he features in his films as if they were credible scientists are really just buffoons, and I'm utterly embarrassed to have ever taken them seriously.